The Lord be with you. And a Merry Christmas to you all as we continue to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is, we celebrate today the second day of Christmas on December 26th. And uh, we uh, call it the first Sunday of Christmas uh, because it is the first Sunday during this uh, 12-day period. We continue to uh, light the Christ candle in the center of our Advent wreath, which now becomes the main candle. As you see, it's uh, bigger than the rest and so on. The Christ candle represents uh, the presence of our Lord uh, during his earthly life as a reminder that uh, he is with us always, of course, but uh, especially to emphasize his earthly life. We continue to celebrate with the a beautiful uh, Christmas tree and all the sparklies on it, including the lights to remind us of a Christ who has come and the salvation that he brings and the joy and peace that we have uh, through him. Today in our gospel reading, we're going to hear about uh, some people who waited for God's Savior to come, Simeon and Anna, and how God had showed them how Jesus was special, how Jesus was indeed the Savior that they've been waiting for. Let's uh, begin by uh, remembering what the angel uh, told the Shep Bethlehem shepherds uh, that for them, a gift God has sent a gift. For them, a Savior had been born. And for all of us, we sing, From heaven above to earth I come. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. We have celebrated the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Even in this joyous time of year, we fall far short of the life to which our Savior calls us. We are sinners who cannot save ourselves. We have been hard-hearted, unkind, proud, arrogant, impatient, complaining, grudge-holding, 
and more. We confess all our sin to you, Lord, both that of which we are aware and that which is not known to us. We plead for your mercy and forgiveness, as you have promised. Amen. Salvation unto us has come. Jesus was born into the world to fulfill the Father's will, that the world not be condemned by him, but saved. In the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another, as you have been forgiven. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our Maker and Redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive in him who made himself to be like us 
through Jesus Christ, your, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear now the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading comes to us from the book of the Exodus, the 13th chapter. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both man and beast, is mine. Then Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of slavery, for by a strong hand the Lord brought you out from this place. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and your fathers, and shall give it to you, you shall set apart to the Lord all that first opens the womb. All the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. Every firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem. And when in time to come your son asks you, What does this mean? You shall say to him, by a strong hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. For when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of animals. Therefore, I sacrificed to the Lord all the males that first opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the gradual for the Christmas season. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Colossian Christians, the third chapter. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and, if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word and deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the verse of the day. Alleluia! My eyes have seen your salvation, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, 
Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that the thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow, until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of Jesus to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ is 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As a pastor, I love Christmas time because I get to tell people the story of Jesus. But like any human being, I wouldn't be honest if I didn't admit that another one of my favorite things about Christmas is getting presents. But you know what one present I got this year was? I got a Christmas card in the mail. And in the card was a plastic card with a Walmart logo on it. I tried tasting it, but it didn't really have a taste. It wasn't really pretty for hanging on the wall. I mean, it's a Walmart logo. I could use it as a scraper to scrape dishes, maybe. But no, I knew what it was for, just like you know what it is. It's a gift card with a dollar value to it. Now, I could take it to Walmart and trade its value for other stuff like groceries or goods that I need or want. But I never actually see any money just a dollar sign followed by some numbers. But I ask you, what kind of Christmas present is a little plastic card with a dollar sign and a couple of numbers after it? Just, is it just numbers on a plastic card? What good is it? And the big question is, here's your philosophical question of the day. What does that dollar symbol, that S with the vertical line through it, how does that make the numbers mean anything real? Now the dollar symbol, that means that there's value there, there's credit, that I could trade for something else that I want. When I see that dollar sign, then it is a promise backed by the trustworthiness of the United States government. If people and world nations don't trust the United States government, then the value of the dollar decreases. And a dollar sign is a promise that whatever trustworthiness is there is worth trading for something else that I would like to have. And that person or store or website where I trade the money value can trade the money value to someone else for what they want and so on. So money, you know, is a promise. It's a promise that you can trade the value, the credit, the money for something that you really want, like food or clothing or fun stuff. Well, God has given you and me some promises. And it's kind of like that money value. It's just an abstract thing. We have a promise from God, but it's not the goods in our hands. It's just a promise. God gives us lots of promises in the Bible. But we might say, well, where is the good stuff? How can we trade in God's promises to get the stuff that really helps us? Well, the biggest promise that God has given to us is that everyone who believes in Jesus will never die. How is that for a promise? How is that for a gift? God says, I will give you eternal life. And God promises us that he's prepared a place for us in heaven. He says, I want to come and bring you to be with me, to live forever with me in my house in heaven. We have God's promise that his house is big. There's plenty of room for all of us and that it's wonderful. But we haven't seen it. It's just a promise. We're not actually there yet. 
None of us has ever seen heaven, or even God for that matter. But another wonderful promise of God is that we'll all be happy there, and we'll all be together who believe in him, and we'll never be sad. Now, even though I can't see heaven, I can't see God, I still trust that he's real, and that he's faithful, and that he's going to keep his promise. Even though I can't see Jesus, I know that God sent Jesus into the world so that you and I will never die, but live forever. But what good are promises that you can't hold in your hand or taste or enjoy? Well, when I received the gift card for Christmas, I had to trust that although I couldn't see yet the actual gifts that I wanted, I had to trust that the dollar sign on that card, or sometimes even a dollar sign on a phone screen, is valuable. That I can trust that it's valuable enough that I could trade that credit for something that I really want or need. In the same way, God gives us the gift of Jesus. And it's an invisible thing for us now. And although Jesus may not look like anything special to us if we see pictures of him or, or other depictions, even if we just try to picture him in our mind from reading the Gospels, he may not see, seem like anything that special except that he can do miracles and he teaches really cool stuff. But we know that he has come to rescue us from death, to take us to his happy home in heaven. And we have God's promises. And those are much more valuable than gold or silver or even the food or the clothes or the toys or anything else we could want in this world. So we trust that God is going to do everything that he has promised us, even though we can't see or touch any of that right now. But God is promising us, one day you will see it, and it'll be real. We learn a lot about trusting in God's promises through the story of Jesus. When Jesus was eight days old, his parents, Mary and Joseph, brought him to Jerusalem, to the temple, to have him circumcised and dedicated to the Lord. For the people of Israel, going all the way back to the time of Moses, this was God's special way for them to enter into God's covenant, to enter into a relationship with him, to become one of his chosen people, much like baptism is for us today. And while Joseph and Mary were at the temple there, a remarkable thing happened. A man named Simeon came up to them. We assume that he was elderly, but the Bible doesn't really say how old he was. But the Bible does say that he was a man who knew God's promise to send a Savior into the world and had been waiting all his life for the coming of God's salvation, the Messiah. God had revealed to Simeon that he would see God's promised Savior with his own two eyes before he died. God also must have given Simeon the special ability to recognize the baby Jesus as that promised Savior. Because when Simeon saw Jesus, he took the baby in his arms and he praised God and he said, Now, O Lord, I can die in peace, knowing that you have fulfilled your promise, not only to me, that I could actually see your promised Savior, that I could actually touch him and hold him. But your promise to all your people, Israel, because this child has come to save us all. And because I've held the baby, I know that all your promises are true. Simeon had grown up waiting for God to make good on his promise to send a Savior, just like all of us. For thousands of years, 
God's people had been waiting for the promised Savior. Although I suspect that after waiting for so long, many people began to doubt God's promises. There's really no Savior coming. That's just, that's just a dream. That's just a myth. Some maybe even stopped believing in God altogether. But not Simeon. He trusted God's promise. He knew that God is trustworthy. God is faithful. That God would save his people. That the Savior would come. Many people before Simeon trusted in God's promises all the way up till the day they died. And then they died in faith, knowing that I didn't get to see it, but one day God is going to fulfill everything that he has promised. God, God's promised Savior will come and will raise us all up from our graves and give us life everlasting. Job expressed this faith a thousand years before the coming of Christ, saying, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my own flesh I shall see God with my own eyes. Not just promises, but I will actually see it and I will be with God. But many, like Job, died without actually getting to see or touch those things. But they knew that God is faithful and that they will. The writer to the Hebrews speaks about many other Old Testament people who were looking forward to God's promise of a Savior and didn't get to see it, like Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Moses, many more. And he says in Hebrews chapter 11, all these people were living by faith when they died. They didn't receive the things God had promised, but they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. Well, it's the same for you and me today. We haven't been given the opportunity like Simeon to actually hold the baby Jesus and look at him with our own two eyes. We can only read about what the eyewitnesses of Jesus have written down for us, the faith that they have passed down to us. And so we look back in time to 2,025 years ago, and we see from a distance that God did send a little baby, his own son, to be our Savior. And we watch him grow up and later to suffer and die on a cross for us. And we hear his words that whoever lives and believes in him will never die, but have eternal life in heaven. These are all things that maybe we'll not get to see until we actually get there. And in that day, the prophets tell us we will say, yes, we were right to believe in God's promises through Jesus Christ. We were right to believe in Jesus as our Savior. He really did rescue us from death like God promised. He really did give us life that never ends, even though we couldn't see it before on earth. It was invisible to us, but we trusted. We knew that God is faithful and that he would keep his promises. He really did prepare a place for us here in heaven. And it's even more wonderful than we ever could imagine it to be. And God has made good on every single promise that he made to us. And now we'll be able to rejoice in his goodness forever. That day is coming. Believe you me. It seems incredible, though, that this special Christmas gift that we received that came to us in the form of an ordinary little baby boy born 2,025 years ago. It seems incredible that that could be of value to us. And yet God promises, believe that this little baby is my son. 
Yes, the Savior that I promised to send since the beginning, since Adam and Eve, that promise, that gift has not expired, and you will have life through my Son. Everything that we need is summed up in that fancy word, salvation. That's what Jesus has come to bring. That's what his name means. The Lord saves salvation. He saves us from death. He gives us everlasting life. And he gives us a home in heaven. It's hard to believe. It sounds like a fairy tale. But it's God's promise. It's a promise worth much more than any dollar sign on a plastic card, gift card or a dollar sign on a screen. No matter what numbers follow that, number, that dollar sign, it's not worth comparing to God's promises that we have. And do you believe that God has the power to make good on those promises? Do you believe that his promises are actually worth something? Do you believe that in the end, like Job, you will see your Redeemer with your own two eyes? Do you believe that after you die, you will be raised again with Christ, never to die again? Do you believe that Jesus, Jesus truly has prepared a place, a wonderful place for you in heaven? We can believe those things with 100% confidence because we know that God who made the promise, we know him. We know that we'll get not only everything that we need and beginning even right now, but so much more than we could ever imagine. And God fulfills his promise when Jesus comes again. So let us pray. We thank you, God, that here in your word, by your Holy Spirit, we have been able to see Jesus our Savior, and in him the fulfillment of all your promises. Keep us firm in the faith, knowing your promise to bring us to heaven is even more precious than gold, even more precious and more secure and certain than a dollar sign. And help us to share the good news of your promises and your gift of Jesus with others and all that we do and say. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. And now may God's peace, which goes beyond all that we can understand, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith in the saving acts of our God with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we pray as Christ our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close now with, let us all with gladsome voice. <laughs> 